Good evening, community members. Before we go any further, we want to take a moment to mention that tonight's meeting is being recorded and will be shared on our Facebook page and website, wcachicago.org. It's also being requested that if anyone else is recording, excuse me, recording or any media is in attendance, please drop a note in the chat box. I'm Carla Gustinelli, Director of Development and Community Partnerships for West Central Association. West Central Association is the delegate agency for the City of Chicago for both the Department of Planning and Development and Business Affairs and Consumer Protection. We are also the service provider for Greektown SSA number 16. Our service area is bound by Grand to 16th Street, Wells to California. West Central Association collaborates with various aldermen and departments within the city of Chicago as a host to a variety of community meetings. For this reason, we encourage everyone to sign up for our newsletter mailing list at wcachicago.org. This is the main method used to notify the community of these meetings. In collaboration with Alderman Burnett Jr., the Department of Planning and Development and the Chicago Department of Transportation, we are hosting a virtual community webinar tonight regarding the results of the full to market traffic study. Your understanding, patience, and flexibility have been much appreciated. Chicago is experiencing an asylum seeker humanitarian crisis. Alderman Burnett will be speaking at a last minute meeting with the mayor's office tonight at Union Park regarding this subject. The decision to prioritize one meeting over another was based on careful evaluation of the importance, relevance, and potential consequences of missing either meeting. Representing the 27th Ward tonight is Reginald Stewart, Chief of Staff for Alderman Burnett and the Chairman for the Committee on Pedestrian and, and Traffic Safety. All Q&A will take place after the presentation. It is requested that you please drop your questions or comments in the chat box. Also a quick reminder to please try and keep any questions related to this specific to the results of the Fulton Market Traffic Study. And now I'd like to introduce president of the West Central Association Board of Directors, Armando Chacon. Thank you, Carla, and thanks for uh, those in attendance uh, virtually here uh, tonight. Um, first, I just wanna say I'm, I'm actually excited to have this conversation uh, tonight as it relates to uh, to, to traffic and any possible changes. Uh, some of us can remember some of our streets being semi-highways, and now um, we now know that that's changed and there's stop signs uh, almost on every block, and things have changed a lot uh, in the neighborhood. And um, I think there's, uh, you know, we have new issues to, uh, to, get ten to contend with, certainly as it relates um, to traffic flow. Um, I want to thank uh, Alderman Burnett for being a big driver and just having this conversation and and, and the study uh, and asking CDOT to, to take a look at the, the issues that we're dealing with as it relates to the traffic flow. Um, but you know we're fortunate to have um, the people that can affect change um, involved and um, hopefully you know for the best. Um, so we're, I'm excited to obviously engage on uh, the greater community and having this conversation as we think about uh, first, I guess, just sort of hearing what, uh, you know, some of the details of the study and maybe even discuss uh, some possible changes that hopefully will make a positive uh, impact. There is no silver bullet. There is no perfect solution that will totally alleviate some of the traffic um problems uh, that that we have, but certainly if we can make improvement, that's why we're here. So uh, with that, um, I want to hand it over uh, to Alderman Burnett, Chief of Staff, uh, Reggie Stewart. Reggie, it's all yours. Hey, thank you for being, uh, thank you for letting me be here. Uh, I just want to sit back and listen and hear what the outcome is, and then I want us to collaborate on what we can do to make these changes better. Uh, the alderman's not here, you know, he has another meeting and uh, I'm just sitting in and listening. Thank you. Hello? Hello? Thanks for that, Reggie. Thank you. Um, 
Thank so you, Ricky. I'll hand it back to you, and I believe we are now. Yeah, Let me hand it over back to you. You tell us where we go from here. Thank you. I think from here we're going to go straight to Steve, correct? Hey there, Steve. Hi there, sure. Let me share my screen here, and we can start this off. Okay. Can everybody well, see the presentation? Yeah, just, just to jump in, I don't know if um, the CDOT and DPD staff should say hello, just as a quick introduction. That would be wonderful. Thank you so much. For yeah, sure. Your well, I'll go ahead and start. My name is Carl Schwarzer. I uh, notice now my panelist link uh, was misspelled a little bit. It's S-C-H-W-A-R-Z-E-R, -E uh, just for your information. But I'm Assistant Chief Traffic Engineer for the City of Chicago. Uh, with us tonight, we have Molly Samadhi. Um, I don't know if she wants to say hello herself. Hello, I'm uh, Chief, of, Chief Traffic Engineer of Isida. And uh, this request came to us about uh, seven, eight years ago, all the men asking for directional change in this area. Obviously, the density has changed and curbside activity has changed. And we thought to go ahead and uh, conduct a, a full comprehensive traffic study uh, to see if any changes can be made to directional uh, direction of the streets and change the curbside activities. Yeah, thank you, Molly. Uh, so as you can see on the screen here, we'll get to this momentarily, but uh, in order to do the traffic study, we uh, commissioned Civil Tech Engineering and we have Steve Pouch and uh, Mark Shorey from Civil Tech here to present on the study. And just to complete the introductions, uh, we also have a couple of members from DPD that work closely with the West Central Association, uh, Fer Fernando Esposito and uh, Heidi Sperry. So I think with that, we'll, we're probably ready to turn it over to Steve now. Right. Thanks, Carl. Yeah. Um, so let, let's jump in. We'll we'll talk about uh, what we've been doing and uh, um, and what we've what we found and some possible changes to consider. So just a little a little history here. Um, as Molly mentioned, um, you know, thing, things have been changing. Uh, we all we all know that Fulton Market, uh, it's growing, it's expanding. Um, and you know, so, some of these uh, changes have led to uh, um, you know, concerns uh, from from people from um, Alderman's office about uh, um, uh, traffic flow and safety. So as part of that, um, requests have come in to make uh, streets one way to alleviate some of that congestion. And um, in a, a couple of years ago, um, a project started uh, in the design phase to uh, improve railroad grade crossings uh, at, at the metro cross, metro um, uh, crossings at some of the streets, north south streets in Fulton Market area. Um, and so as part of that uh, decision, uh, needs to be made for the gate design whether the streets should be uh, one way or or two way. Um, so thought that was a, the perfect time to um, start this the study off and uh, um, work with that project and this, all, all these other factors that are going on to to figure out um, um, whether any street direction changes need to be made. So um, in coordination with the Alderman's office some funding was identified uh, both through TIF and through uh, the Alderman's menu to, to start this study. And this study will be looking or has been looking at uh, 85 intersections within Fulton Market. Um, the limits being Hubbard on the north, Ogden on the west, uh, Washington Street, uh, Washington on the south, and then Halstead on the east. Uh, it's We've been collecting traffic data. Uh, we've also been looking at uh, crashes throughout the study area um, and looking at some other infrastructure needs. Um, so uh, pedestrian and bicycle accommodations, chief among those, and looking at, at curbside use. So we'll be uh, talking about uh, a few of these elements tonight, but really uh, we want to focus on this uh, street direction conversation. And that's where we're looking for uh, community input 
and, uh, and some, some feedback. I mentioned crash analysis. This is a map here that uh, shows the, the past five years, full years of, of crash data. Um, and um, and not, not surprisingly, this is, this is a hotspot map and it shows um, you know, the, these, uh, these darker shaded areas uh, in red here show where um, there's a higher concentration of crashes. And not surprisingly, those are along Halstead and, and Lake with um, a particular notable area here at, at Hubbard and Halstead. Um, which is experiencing far more crashes than any other intersection in the study area. So um, with that, um, uh, the Chicago Department of Transportation is, is started to, uh, is in the process of designing a traffic signal there, uh, which will be um, constructed, I think, um, I think next year. So that, that process is moving. And once that's installed, I think this, uh, this crash crash situation here will, will improve. Another part of the crash analysis uh, that's fairly directly linked to uh, the one-way conversation is um, side swipe and park car crashes. So this map here shows um, where there have been uh, park car and side swipe crashes uh, over the past five years. Um, you can see uh, where, they're, where they're concentrated um, along Halstead, a little bit here on Racine, particularly narrow portion portions of Racine, um, and then also kind of towards the the eastern part of the study area, um, with a surprising amount being here on uh, showing up on Green Street. Part of our data collection, um, we're, we're being very multimodal. We're collecting all types of data. This map here shows. Uh, the bike volumes that uh, um, are, were observed over a 24-hour period. Um, I just want to say this is probably more of an order of magnitude uh, type, you know, way to compare one street to another, just because bike volumes are so variable uh, depending on the weather, depending on the, the, the time of, uh, of year. Um, but you can see the streets that are experiencing um, heavier bike tra traffic than others. And then in traffic volumes, um, this is the number of cars that are that were counted on each street in a 24 hour period. Um, so mo most, uh, most traffic uh, by far is on, on Ogden here in the West End, um, Coors Lake and Halstead also have fairly heavy volumes here compared to the other streets. Uh, the north-south streets, the volumes are fairly similar, um, somewhere in that, uh, most of them are in that 2,000 to 4,000 uh, car per day range. The one that sticks out here is Green Street where there's um, um, more than 7,000 vehicles per day traveling on along that, uh, that street. So, you know, what what is uh, what is an ADT volume like? What what is that? How do those compare to other streets in Chicago? So this this chart here shows um, you know the types of volumes that you can expect on typical streets in Chicago. So Ogden is up here. That's the four lanes arterial street with left turn lanes. Um, you know, most of the other uh, more major streets are are in this kind of this eight thousand uh, range of two, so you're talking about the two lane streets like Halstead, uh, like like Lake Street, um, and then many of the most of the north south streets are somewhere uh, kind of in this uh, area here on the high end of a local street volume, or maybe on the very lower end of just a, a standard two lane street without left turn lanes. So most of the streets um, uh, we're seeing, uh, you know, they're they're not. Uh, Extremely heavy volumes, like you'd see in some other uh, really dense areas, like like River North. Um, and that I think that's just um, due to the geography of uh, Fulton Market area, where a lot of the streets are uh, discontinuous. They don't they don't run across, um, you know, 
they don't connect to other other streets outside of, of Fulton Market. So that's helping to keep the, the volumes uh, fairly low. This graph here, I think, is really interesting. And if there's any uh, um, uh, business people here, I think they could find this, this interesting, too, just kind of showing what traffic is uh, looking like uh, on a, a typical street in Fulton Market over, over three different years. So blue line is 2018. So that's really the, uh, the kind of the pre-COVID uh, benchmark. Uh, you can see in 2018, where the the volumes experience distinct AM and PM peaks, um, and kind of a a, a lower uh, period, lower traffic period during the middle of the day. Then in 2021, uh, these these volumes were collected. Um, I would say probably around fall, September, October time, 2021. Um, volumes are pretty flat. Um, they rise a little bit uh, in the evening, but um, not not that much. Um, and recently we went out and collected some some data. We wanted to see what was what's going on there now. how how have things recovered? And um, it's interesting. there's really not much of a morning peak. so this this red line here show through the uh, seven eight nine a m period is showing fairly flat volumes. Um, a little bit of a, a bump in the middle of the day, but then the PM peak is definitely recovered. And in fact, it's even uh, uh, longer. So the, the, the PM, uh, the, the, the time of day when uh, there's kind of the evening rush, so to speak, is, is elongated from uh, almost really early afternoon at this, you know, this two o'clock time all the way through seven. So, um, so, so traffic volumes throughout the day are fairly similar, 2018 to 2023, but the time that the people are traveling is a little bit different. This, this is a final exhibit here related to traffic volumes. So when thinking about um, uh, potential conversions to one way, we wanted to see if traffic is moving uh, in one particular direction versus another. So is there a predominant flow northbound or or southbound. So um, these arrows here show the predominant traffic flow, but then uh, the, the dark, the darker the blue line, the more pronounced that that movement is. So you want really it's where you see these dark blue lines where there's a significant pattern one direction or the other. Um, and so what we found is for the most part, um, traffic is fairly even uh, northbound versus southbound on, on most of these streets, uh, with the notable exception of Racine Avenue. And Racine is seeing a lot more southbound traffic than, than northbound traffic, um, most likely because it's kind of a, an extension of the, uh, the Kennedy inbound exit ramp where, where people come in and then travel south and Racine use that um, to enter enter the city, especially the, the west side of Chicago. Um, and then to a little bit lesser extent, May is acting as a, kind of a, as a complement to Racine, call it a, a one-way pair. Even though it's a two-way street, there's a little bit more uh, northbound traffic on May than, than Racine, uh, as you can see with these little darker blue lines up, especially towards the northern part of the study area. Uh, some other data that we've collected, um, street widths um, and potential pinch points uh, is what, what this graphic here illustrates. Um, the red lines here are streets that are uh, less than 34 feet wide, uh, which we consider to be a little bit on the narrow side, especially if there's parking allowed on, on both sides. Um, so you see that uh, mainly on Racine here. Also on Ada Street, uh, with a couple of other pinch points. There's a little uh, narrow spot on Morgan, south of Lake, and then also on Green, south of Wayman. Uh, some other pinch points that we've shown on this map here. Um, these blue, these blue stars are um, they they indicate uh, a significant restaurant or um, hotel use. 
So those are spots where there's often uh, valet or other uh, pronounced curbside activity uh, and perhaps places where there would more likely be um, double parking. Um, see that mostly on in the uh, the eastern part of the the study area, um, and then also uh, diagonal parking to these slash marks here. Um, that those diagonal parking can add a little bit of friction, um, especially when there's a high turnover, lots of cars pulling in and out, uh, can can slow traffic a bit. So we wanted to show those uh, those locations. When considering one-way versus two-way travel, there's um, it's kind of an inherent set of uh, positives and negatives to each configuration. So we wanted to think about um, each one of those uh, when considering potential directional changes. Um, so these are these are shown on the screen here. So uh, benefits would be um, for one-way streets. Um, wherever there's double parking or construction, uh, there'd be fewer, fewer delays as cars can more e easily navigate around um, the, the obstruction. Uh, many cases, one-way streets can lessen the, uh, the risk of sideswipe or even uh, uh, parked car crashes, especially when the streets are really narrow. Uh, if you're crossing the street, you only have to look uh, one direction for approaching traffic for one-way streets. And uh, one-way streets can also free up space to install other um, other amenities within the right-of-way. So uh, well, pro probably the most uh, uh, common example would be uh, bike lanes, making room to uh, install bike lanes. But there, there's also some trade-offs. Um, some challenges if one for um, one-way streets um, because there is more more room um, vehicles may tend to travel more more quickly and they may uh, drivers may be more aggressive um, especially if um, uh, complementary changes like uh, uh, bump outs or other ways to uh, visually narrow the, the street aren't aren't made uh, with one-way streets, travel times and distances can be higher as uh, motorists circle the block um, to get to their destination. There's a little bit more out-of-way travel. Um, with one-way streets, there's a potential for wrong-way traffic that doesn't exist with, with two-way streets, uh, although that's that can be mitigated with, uh, with good signage and, and striping. And oftentimes, uh, if there is one wrong way traffic, it's happening right after the uh, the street, the direction of the street is converted, and uh, generally tends to work itself out uh, after a few weeks. And with uh, one one way streets, uh, the traffic that's going in the other direction um, has to go somewhere, so it's it's going to be uh, displaced to uh, adjacent street. So. For that reason, usually when we're uh, converting streets to one way, you like to do them in pairs. So if one's going northbound, you like to have a complement going southbound. So now for the big reveal, um, this map here shows uh, what we're proposing uh, in terms of uh, one-way streets. I'm gonna go through and discuss um, each one of these in more detail, but I just wanted to show this overview map here. Um, you'll see that it's not all streets. Uh, in fact, it's it's fewer than than half of the north south streets. Uh, we found, you know, with the traffic volumes uh, now and even uh, in the future, that uh, they can easily two way traffic uh, can easily be handled on on most of the streets, um, and that. Um, um, the benefits of maintaining two-way operation outweigh the uh, um, the disadvantages. So let's talk about uh, each one of these. Uh, we'll start with with Green Street, which I, I'm sure everybody here on it, on the call or in this in this meeting uh, they're they're familiar with Green Street and some of the issues there. 
Um, very frequent um, loading activity up and down uh, up and down the block. A lot of uh, a lot of double parking and also uh, heavier traffic volumes than a lot of the other uh, north south streets in the area. So that when there is that um, double parking, it it does it causes issues because you know there's more people that that want to get through there. So uh, it, looking at the data and, and um, um, we're, we're proposing to make uh, Green Street one way southbound between Lake and Washington. Um, that's that those two blocks there. Uh, I think that, that's they experienced some of the the most acute issues um, going north of Lake. Uh, we did look at converting green to one way, but uh, with the disconnected street network up here um, and the um, uh, the, the uh, westbound direction on Fulton, eastbound on Wayman just really uh, added a lot of challenge and we didn't think, think it was a, a good idea um, to extend that, uh, that conversion further to the north. But um, I think you know, the, these two blocks here, I think, would, would mitigate a lot of the issues that uh, we've been hearing. Um, um, we know that I know that CDOT's been hearing from from the community. Um, so, um, you know, at, at the end of the, 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 the presentation today, I, we can we can discuss um, this and then the other rec recommendations. But I will go to the next street here. That we're we'll talk about now, Morgan, we're not proposing changing it to uh, uh, one way, although we have ha heard lots of uh, complaints about this area here south of Lake. Uh, there's quite a bit of, of double parking next to all these uh, uh, these restaurant storefronts, um, which uh, is a problem given this this bump out here. So this this parking occurs within the, the traffic lane and it blocks up blocks up traffic. It really makes the street a little bit too narrow. Um, and that happens on, um, it happens on both sides of, of Morgan. Um, but um, we don't think that changing the street to one way is the, the correct approach here. We're coordinating with the alderman's office to uh, come up with some other ideas to, to mitigate this, uh, including designating some area areas uh, near near the uh, the curb extension as uh, as standing zones so hopefully shifting some of that that traffic uh, elsewhere so that the curbside manage management strategies that I'm, I'm talking about um, will hopefully mitigate that uh, that issue um, with the the double parking or the uh, the parking in the travel lane uh, near Lake Street on Morgan. Racine in May. Um, so we're looking at Racine as a one way southbound street, um, extending south from uh, Grand, where it's already uh, one way southbound to the north of Grand, uh, and just continuing that one way south uh, throughout the study area down to Washington Street. Um, as some of the previous slides showed, Racine is a really narrow street, uh, some parts um, 30 feet wide, um, and with a predominantly heavy, uh, predominantly southbound uh, traffic flow, uh, it, it makes sense, um, I think, for, for southbound uh, traffic there. And then uh, as a one-way complement to that would be May Street. Uh, with the uh, directional change, um, the limits of there being Washington on the south and uh, Grand on the north. So we think that this um, this one-way pair of Racine and May would um, increase uh, safety through here um, by reducing risk of side slope crashes. Uh, it would improve traffic flow, especially in Racine, where it's really narrow and there's pinch points. Um, and then also, uh, quite importantly, um, 
converting these streets to uh, one way would free up some space to install um, some some bike facilities, which uh, we'll talk about a little bit later in in the presentation. But I just want to mention that now. Um, right now, there's there's no um, uh, no marked bike routes um, in the Fulton Market area once you uh, go east of, or go west of of Halstead. And finally, uh, Ada Street, which is also 30 feet wide, fairly narrow, um, lots of parking. Um, so converting Ada to uh, one way, either northbound or southbound, we haven't, uh, we don't really have a preference based on the data. So that would be something that could be um, uh, discussed. I love anybody's, uh, people's input who are on the, the call today. Um, but but Ada, Ada Street, uh, one way, it'd be fairly easy change to make um, because uh, this is one of the streets in Fulton Market that doesn't cross the metro tax, so it doesn't require coordination with, uh, with um, uh, the railroad improvement project. So um, that's... That's the one way, and I just want to touch here a little bit on some of the other infrastructure improvements that um, are being either recommended or we're aware of um, that are in progress right now. I uh, mentioned the, the rail track crossing improvements shown here, with these yellow, yellow boxes, um, and of, of, of the streets that we're recommending uh, one way we're seeing in May are require that co close coordination between the uh, grade crossing projects and the street direction conversion. Uh, there's a number of traffic signals that are either uh, in the design phase or um, or in the planning phase. So those are shown um, either in this this blue this blue color here. Um, or um, in this purple color up here, you see on, on Grand, and then some, uh, this, not a new signal, but traffic signal upgrades here at Ogden and Hubbard. Um, and then also um, uh, intersection realignment project, which is uh, contemplated here at Kinsey and Racine, where there's a little bit of a there's a triangle here, and I'm closing one leg of that 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 uh, triangle to uh, realign the street and make things a little bit safer. Here, here's uh, um, here's our potential ideas for for bike routes to the Fulton Market area. Um, so I mentioned the, the one-way conversions on Racine and May would free up space to allow installation of, of bike facilities um, throughout Fulton Market area, providing uh, nice access to, to cyclists. So that's something that's just kind of in the planning stages right now and uh, requires a little bit more conversation, but uh, we wanted to show it here now just, just, because, just to show that it is um, it is being talked about, as is um, uh, bike facilities on Morgan, where Morgan is really fairly wide south of Lake Street. Uh, and there's, there's space to install uh, buffered bike lane on, on Morgan uh, fairly easily with just with, uh, with striping and uh, not changing, no physical changes to the roadway. This graphic here shows other projects that are in the works, um, bicycle and pedestrian projects, uh, quite a lot of them here in the southern or just outside of the southern boundary of the, uh, the study area in Washington, um, Madison and, and Randolph, uh, as well as uh, to the, just to the north of the study area on, on Grand. And then um, a long-term uh, study to um, evaluate uh, a, a, a bicycle, a north-south bicycle connection uh, through the eastern part of, of Fulton Market here. So 
So ne next steps uh, for this study. Um, so we like we like feedback. Um, that's that's why we're here. Uh, we're in the process of, of gathering feedback from from stakeholders and incorporating that into the study. So we'd love to hear from from you all. Um, that feedback will help us finalize the uh, recommendations for one-way street conversion, uh, which is necessary to do to do before uh, the railroad uh, the railroad gate crossing uh, improvements can proceed. So once once all that's finalized, we'll be finishing up the report that's going to incorporate all those recommendations, um, finalizing that, submitting that, and then uh, helping to uh, prepare cost estimates and even identify funding for, for some of the infrastructure projects. Um, so when are, when are the one-way streets, when could they possibly happen? What's, what's the earliest they could happen? So Green Street and Ada Street, um, we can consider those as as pilot projects um, because they don't cross the rail tracks. It's and there's not a lot of infrastructure, mainly just uh, signage and striping um, that would be involved in changing the direction. Um, we can do that really quickly, um, perhaps within a few month period once the decision decisions made. So um, and, and the benefit of uh, the potential one-way conversions on Green and Ada, um, because it is a pilot, because it's it's really low cost. Yeah, uh, you could you could change the direction, and if things don't work out, it's easy to change the direction to the opposite direction or make it back to two-way. Um, so that that's a real nice aspect of that. Uh, Racine and May are a little bit more complicated. Um, so once the one way the term the, the, once the determination is made to convert it to the streets to one way um, pretty much locked in um, over a, a a long period of time because the railroad gates have to be designed to uh, accommodate whichever direction uh, is is chosen so and, and since that's a fairly expensive proposition to deal with railroad and railroad uh, equipment uh, you know, once once that's made, that's that's the way it's it's going to be for a while. So, um, and that that one way conversion would occur at the same time that those railroad gates are uh, modified, which is uh, likely in 2026 or 2027. And then the bike infrastructure potentially um, um, would be installed at the same time uh, that the streets are converted to one way. So with that, um, that concludes my presentation. I don't know if uh, Carl or Molly, if you want to add anything or if we want to just go into the questions now. I think you covered everything. So we should just go to questions. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, one of the first comments or questions was, from Laura Perlman, unfortunately, you always have to look both ways. Cars are always going the wrong way. That was a dangerous statement, in my opinion. Uh, noted. From Sam Martirina, the developer already committed to, ins to install a traffic signal at May and Grand. I don't know if anyone wants to comment on that. Thanks. Uh, noted. Thank you. Okay. Uh, James Craig, what's the bike lane planning look like for notorious intersections like Hubbard and Halstead? Uh, oh. Okay. Uh, uh, Carl, you want to answer that? Well, I, I would just share that, you know, at this point, um, you know, we're still presenting the one-way conversion even as, you know, our recommendation. Uh, this is kind of step one in that process. We just note that, uh, you know, a one-way conversion could potentially free up that space if that's something that uh, ultimately wants to be uh, followed up on. And with that said, you know, obviously when it gets to the design stage, everything's going to be factored into that design. 
Um, I think there's also going to be some follow-up questions uh, looking ahead at the list. There are, uh, you know, future changes planned for Randolph as well. So there's a lot of kind of overlapping projects here and a lot of design would go into it. And I, I, to a certain extent, I imagine there's going to be a public engagement process when it gets to that actual design stage as well. Thank you. Will this deck be made available after the meeting? Will this be public? Are we allowed to post it and share? Uh, Molly, I don't know if you have a, an opinion on that. I... It's public. I mean, yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I felt too. Yes, oh, sure. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> yes, it's by all means. Uh, yes, yes wonderful. Be thank shared. you. Thank you. Uh, from Matt Letourneau, thanks to C.DPD and Civitech for conducting this study. Please describe how you would address the one way um, termini at, Bus at Busy Randolph Street. Please also address the study of Randolph that was initiated at the beginning of the pandemic but has not progressed since then. Yeah, much like the the bike lane, uh, that that's obviously something that will be, you know, we'll take a real engineering look at that. A lot of design and preparation will go into it. As far as the Randolph study goes, uh, my understanding is that it is still a phase one study. It is uh, progressing. It's um, uh, still underway and more updates should be coming in the future. Great. Um, also from Matt Laterno, apart from the one-way proposals, will signal timing improvements, protected turn movements, or other measures be applied in the near term? When will new signals be installed along Lake Street? Um, yeah, as we noted on that uh, exhibit showing uh, potential improvements. Some of those signals, um, you know, it's a mix of some are design is underway, some are being studied as part of a future CDOT led project, some of them are tied to individual developments. So, in some ways, they're on individual timelines, uh, and we can certainly look into that. We don't have that specific inf information with us today. Yeah, the answer actually to be so specific um, regarding the, for instance, the requirement for left and lane, left and signal, right and signal, um, timing, optimization of timing is going to be as part of those projects. I hope I answered your question. Yes, yeah, sorry about that. I kind of skipped over the first portion of the question. Thank you so much for the clarification. Um, Sam Martirina is asking, can you guys do a shorter presentation at our October 2nd Neighbors of River West meeting at St. John Cantius Church? A lot of our members were called into an emergency migrant meeting tonight at the same time. We will work with Alderman's office and try to make that. Wonderful. Uh, the next question, Nora Flint, I may have missed it, but was any consideration given to a stoplight on Randolph and Green or Randolph and Peoria? So as, as part of the study, we are, are looking at traffic signal warrants at, um, at any of the intersections uh, where, you know, it, it, there, there seems to be a need. So that is you know, looking at traffic signal warrants is part of the, uh, the scope of the study. Um, I don't think at this point that um, warrants are necessarily met, but we'll, we can take another look at that. Thank you. Matt Letourneau has a few questions. Neighbors of West Loop had previously proposed one-way streets elsewhere in the neighborhood, but CDOT cited excessive speeds as a reason not to implement them. Why does the team now feel that one-way streets are suitable? So I can answer that question. This is the reason we embarked on a comprehensive study because uh, previously we received, you know, in various streets, directional change and, you know, piecemealing things without looking at the entire um, um, entire uh, 
you know, boundary of, of, of a section of, of the, uh, say, you know, in this case, Fulton market, it's hard to really know that if you change the direction of the street, what impact is going to do in other streets. Now that you can see that we have done data collection, uh, crash analysis, which direction each street is leaning towards already, uh, it, it has helped us to 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 um, decide uh, like which streets can be considered for conversion. Thank you for that. I, uh, let me just I'll just add too, like a lot of the streets in Fulton Market, they're very short block lengths, and the the width is already you know fairly narrow, so. Um, speeds on on those streets are really limited um so i don't think that there's going to be a, a major change to uh to, to vehicular speeds uh when if and when streets change from two way to one way hey carla can i interject here absolutely um you know, Matt Letourneau um, seems to have some questions and is uh, president of, of Neighbors of West Loop and somebody that's uh, fairly knowledgeable on on this issue. Uh, can I suggest that we allow him to, to speak? And actually, while while Carla's maybe working on that, um, if I may just uh, ask a couple of questions and make a statement, um, just for the community's information, um, uh, you know, you shared the parameters of the study. Uh, was that mostly driven by just the fact that you know, obviously, the parameters are within the 27th Ward Fort Market District, and I guess I would just be curious if we could expand on on this study um, to go, you know, south of Washington into the 34th Ward. Is that a question? I'm sorry. Um, it is. Can you just confirm how you chose the parameters of the study, for one? And if you could maybe um, have a follow-up study that would include the neighborhood just south of uh, Washington. Sure. Steve, do you remember so when we decided? I yeah. Didn't... Yeah. Yeah. Well, a lot of it is is driven by the boundaries of the uh, the TIF, for one. So uh, that's where the funding can be used. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, there may be some follow-up on that. Um, also, uh, speaking. For myself, as a longtime uh, resident and business owner and somebody that goes up and down these streets about every day, I just want to make a statement on ADA. Um, I, I would highly be in favor of, of ADA if it's to be one way to go, uh, one, be one way going north. Uh, and I think primarily because it seems just to make sense and also it runs right into um, Ogden, uh, which kind of a natural way if you're making your way towards uh, the entrance there onto the Kennedy going northbound. Um, as it relates to green, uh, I see you have it going one way, going south, but just kind of curious why south versus uh, versus north? Yes, Steve? Yeah, let me... Let me... Pull that slide back up um, so we can talk from that. So I, I think uh, one way northbound versus southbound, I think there's there's definitely some merit to both. Um, in, in fact, um, I think one at one point in, in a, one iteration we had been showing it as one way one way northbound. Um, and we'd received some some feedback, some local feedback that um, um, that you know leave, to leave it southbound because there's a lot of cars that that turn off of of Lake here to head to head south. 
um, that could become you know problematic if it were one way one way northbound. Um, that's um, but you know other other than than that, I think there's there's still some consider there's you know there's merits to either either direction. There's just kind of a, a slight edge to the uh, the southbound um, rather than northbound. Well, thanks but for that, that explanation. I'd be curious to get more uh, feedback from from those on this call and, uh, and and beyond. So, just one last question: Have you thought about making uh, Washington a two way uh, bike lane instead of just one way going east? I'm not sure if we'll be able to answer that on this call. That may be a question that is. Um, that could be directed to the CDOT's uh, the CDOT's bike program, um, but yeah, that, that's not not something that we had uh, heard of previously. But I think there there is. I don't know if that's part of the. So there there is a, a study in progress on Washington. Um, so um, maybe we can put you in in contact with the appropriate people. Um, that are running that study, um, see you know where that's at, and you know if there's if that's been uh, a consideration. As you know, it wouldn't be the first. Um, I believe LaSalle is one street that comes to mind where there is a two. Where is it, Dearborn? Um, I'm sure there are others. So it just seems to make sense in my own opinion. Um, so yeah, looking forward to more discussion on that. Uh, however, let me get. But uh, get back to some of these other questions. Thank you, Nora. Yeah, uh, Dearborn uh, has a two way bike lane. Carl, I'll hand it back to you. Okay, thank you. Uh, also, another comment or question rather from Matt Letourneau. Carl noted that the Randolph study is now in phase one. Is this being led by CDOT or IDOT? CDOT. Thank you. Did pedestrian safety influence the recommendations? Absolutely. Absolutely. Bike and pedestrian safety is prominent to anything. You know what this is? The basis for my question there was just wondering, uh, I can't recall if you Anyone. had um, pedestrian crashes, bike crashes as part of the crash analysis uh, if that was separated out from the vehicular crashes and side swipes. Yeah, Matt, um, we uh, we have that information. Uh, there's just a lot of material in this presentation, so um, we couldn't include everything, um, but that, that will definitely be something that will be in the final report. Um, uh, we'll have all kinds of, of, of statistics and graphics and recommendations related to pedestrian safety and, and uh, uh, bike safety. Okay, yeah, thanks Steve. I, I just wanna make sure that that's considered the, the predominant reason for the changes that are being made. Um, anything affecting traffic flow should be secondary to pedestrian and cyclist uh, safety. Yes, and including like missing sidewalks and everything. So those are in consideration. Whatever that. Okay, great. And uh, the, thank you um, to WCA for putting me on the audio. I appreciate it. it it's difficult to uh, clarify exactly what questions are being asked uh, when typing them. My, my question earlier about capacity uh, and capacity improvements. We had a developer recently propose a project at the corner of Lake and Halstead, and we were told that there would be a left turn lane added. And, left turn movement. And I just wanted to make sure that as part of this study, that that level of detail was being considered, that we're not just becoming too fixated on uh, one way pairs uh, at a couple of locations, but that this study will in fact lead to capacity uh, analysis based improvements at all intersections in the study area, or at least most uh, where the, the problems are most severe. Yeah, I'll answer that too. It's similar answer to the, uh, um, you know, the, the pedestrian question you asked. Yes, there is a compre there's comprehensive uh, capacity analyses that are that have been done. It's quite 
quite a uh, quite a lift to do 85 intersections. But yes, that that is part of it. Yeah. Uh, it's just like not kind of outside of the scope of this this presentation to show all that information. Okay, sure. Yeah, uh, like I said, that begs the follow up question: Will the will the draft documentation as well as the slides be made available for community review? Well, draft, I think that it still needs work. So, but then presentation, I think we can share. Right. We wanted to get this this presentation. We, we kind of we split off the one way um, street direction portion of the study, kind of moving ahead of the rest of the study, just because of the timeline and wanting to get that moving, so we could get the, the railroad crossing um, improvements moving. So that's that's. Kind of why you're seeing that out in front of uh, everything else at this point. Right. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I can certainly appreciate that. Want to keep things moving. Um, you know, yeah, the the Randolph study for one. It's been three years now since we all got together, and I'm still eager to see where that's headed. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to make sure that any uh, near term improvements, those capacity improvements with signal timing and other uh, such improvements, can be made in the near term. Uh, if I could just, I guess, maybe close with a comment. I'm I'm very excited to see um, the, the recommendations that they include bike lanes. Uh, I think that's a big step forward uh, and is a differentiator for this one-way pair uh, proposal along May and Racine. Um, incidentally, uh, neighbors of West Loop came up with a similar concept a couple of years ago uh, that almost exactly mirrors what you've been showing. So it's good to see that that's uh, in line um, with our thinking. I wonder if there are any other uh, East-West one-way proposals to go along with it. Um, I know Kinsey is one way up to the area where you're proposing. Are you, are you then uh, proposing to keep Kinsey two-way west of that? And there is sort of a wonky intersection at Racine and Kinsey, a triangular intersection. Is that going to stay as is? I know there's some developments proposed there. Um, I wanted to ask about that. And I guess, sorry, one last thing. Did this study include volume projections that include all of the various proposed developments. Sorry to cram so much into the question, but a lot of my list. Thanks. Well, uh, yeah, um, let's start with the, uh, the east-west one-way street conversation. Um, yeah, we, we're, we're looking at that. Um, so um, a, lot, a lot of it, these east-west streets get a little bit tricky. I think kind of like like you mentioned um, with the, um, especially as they get further west towards uh, towards Ogden, um, we didn't see any any reason um, to to change any of these streets to to one way. Especially you know if you're converting some of these north-south streets to one way. Uh, leaving the east-west streets uh, as two-way, um, like Carroll intersecting, that kind of helps to maintain um, mobility through the, through uh, Fulton Market. Um, so, yeah, to answer your question, uh, yes, we did look at that, and uh, we are not recommending any um, changes to east-west streets. Um, so, um, development questions we are in co we're coordinating with uh with dpd um as um you know, projects come through here we're making sure you know so if there's if there's a, a, like a signal that uh is on that we've found is is warranted um or there's signal improvements or, or some other improvement that's near the development we want to make sure that that developer is uh can in, in, incorporate that into their their, their plan development. Um, so you know every time a new proposal for site development comes in, CDOT and DPD they 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 shoot the plan this way, and that is that's all that's all included. Um, so uh, accommodations for for future traffic uh, growth uh, as well. So. Um, yeah. Yes, that is to answer your question. That, that's that's accounted for. And I don't know if you had a third question there. Did I get them all? Yeah. No, I, I think you did. Um, uh, yeah, incorporating projected volumes from developers seems to be a constantly moving target. We see a lot of proposals um, sort of focused on a one block area, and I, I'm glad to hear that those one-off 
projections are inc being incorporated in and overlaid on top of each other. I think that has a lot to do with why uh, those those uh, the graphs you showed earlier demonstrate the traffic volumes are very quickly caught up to 28 to pre-pandemic levels because we have that many more buildings with that many more uh, residents here now. Not to mention business. I mean, we're a, we're a thriving uh, neighborhood, you know, thanks to uh, WCA and and others that are putting in the time. So all of that growth is leading to uh, constantly increasing traffic volumes. And uh, I'm glad to hear that that's being considered and then that's hopefully being projected further into the future that we're not just solving for problems today, but solving for problems well into the future. Hey, man, let me yeah. just jump in on that. You know, I, I mean, obviously this is uh, a fluid situation um, as the neighborhood continues to uh, to evolve. And for that reason, I would, I would ask, um, the aldermen and, and and everyone here involved uh, to just kind of keep an open mind and, and be prepared to revisit uh, as the neighborhood continues to change. So um, it's just tough to make decisions today for what we don't know uh, in the future. Um, again, I commend I commend every, everything that has been done so far to get us to this point and have, have this discussion. But yeah, I, I think I'm agreeing with you, Matt, as I, I think uh, we should revisit this uh, in, in the near term when necessary. Yeah, something something that we can get out to the community would be great. Something more than, I don't know how many attendees there are right now, but it was already mentioned that there's a conflicting meeting at the same time. So whatever we can do to get uh, broader community input would be helpful. We did, uh, I mean, to, to be um, full disclosure, when we did come up with the concept, uh, neighbors of West Loop, that is, with a, a one-way pair along Main and Racine. We brought that to some community members in Fulton Market, and they, they didn't like it. Um, I don't know if they're on the line today, but um, well, I think there will be some, some greater feedback that you'll get beyond me just uh, asking question after question along with a couple of others here. Thank well, well, thanks for all of that, Matt. Maybe it's a good time to go back to the questions. So, Carla, well, back to you. Great. Uh, Allison Glenn, do you consider pedestrian safety in determining need for traffic lights at intersections like Green and Randolph, or is that based on car volume? The answer to that question is um, yes, it's both. Uh, it's car volume and uh, pedestrian volume. There's um, there's certain thresholds that are set forth by uh, by the federal government, by um, FHWA that need to be met, and those are uh, evaluated when you're looking at the need for a traffic signal. Thank you. From Dr. Block, from the initial traffic study request, data gathering, analysis, et cetera, what is the usual turnaround time from beginning to end on average? Is that the, the turnaround time to do traffic study? Um, From the initial request, gathering the data, doing the analysis, what's the turnaround time from beginning to end on average? Well, I think that that depends on the scope of the traffic study. So the, this study started, um, well, th this study was delayed a bit because, of course, it had to start right you know, during, during COVID. So there was a long period of time when it was very... Uh, uh, well, you, you couldn't collect any data at all. So the, the, the study was put on hold and uh, you, you now with uh, traffic rebounding, finally, uh, 2022, 2023, the study is uh, moving forward. So, um, you know, for, for a typical study like this, I mean, it's a, it's a, big, it's a big study with 85 uh, intersections. So um, it's probably a, a, a generally, you know, if COVID weren't, uh, a factor probably be somewhere in the range of a two two year study. Thank you. When do you anticipate implementing the railroad crossing improvements? So that is um, either in twenty twenty six or twenty twenty seven. And the last that we have. Uh, the last Q&A that's open is from Allison Glenn. I've seen cars that appear to think green is one way driving southbound in the northbound lane on green in Greektown to the south of the study area. 
Will making green one way for only two blocks potentially create more confusion in the area just south of there, or it is back to two way? Well, yeah, well, I'll just mention, uh, yeah, go ahead, Carl. Well, I would just mention that, you know, we, it, this the boundary of this study was kind of tied to kind of that that TIF boundary. Uh, this is by no means something that uh, can't be evaluated. We can certainly look further. Uh, could consider two way conversion in coordination with the ward office and the community. So that's certainly something that uh, you know any of the recommendations here could theoretically uh, be revisited outside of the borders that are shown here on this particular study. And one final comment from Matt Letourneau. Recommendations like those included in the dis discussion should not replace the need to enforce double parking and other traffic violations. Noted. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and also note that there is a curbside use component to this study. So that's not, um, not touched on today, but um, that's also will be in the final report. Are there any other questions at this time? Any of the panelists want to share any final words before we conclude? Yes, I just want to say thank you for thank you all for coming and sharing. This is nothing written in stone, so we all got to work together on this plan. And then uh, just a thought, uh, a question, if maybe we should set a time for, um, you know, a comment period for greater community to, to pass along feedback. Um, I don't know if you, uh, any of you guys have thought about that, uh, whether it be one week, two weeks, a month. And um, have you guys thought about that or is there, I want to leave it open ended for now. Just, just it might be good to kind of set a timeline on that. Yeah, I definitely think there should be a public feedback period, uh, minimum, um, minimum of a couple of weeks. But I mean, yeah, there was mention of an October second meeting, so perhaps we could go a little after that. Just to you know, in the event that hopefully we can join and uh, present some version of this again or at the very least this uh, slide could be shared there potentially. So perhaps we should target something after October 2nd. Great, thank you. Carl, thank you so much. So in the meantime, if you have any questions, if anyone has any questions, feel free to reach out to us over at West Central Association, the Alderman's office as well. Uh, and we will make certain to circulate those questions back to uh, the various departments at CDOT, uh, as well as DPD. And on that, everyone, I believe our meeting has concluded. Thank you all so very much for your time and consideration for tonight. A copy of this meeting will be available online.